what value does the Old Testament have? Welcome everybody to our program. Uh, why do you believe that as we look at how to defend our faith and knowing why we believe what we believe? Uh, please welcome Don Stewart. Don, wonderful to have you back with me again. Yeah, well, thanks for having me, Tom. I love doing these programs and I appreciate you having me so, so very much. It, well, I know it's pretty regular, so I know it's a lot, but um, it, it's, it's, you know, people are really blessed by it. And, it's, uh, and I know it's out of your schedule, so I just, out of, a lot out of your time, but I really just want to thank you for doing these, being so faithful. It's great. Wonderful. Well, no, no, I love doing it, actually, and so it's not a problem at all, and I'm, I'm pleased because you have such a wonderful audience out there, too, and you do such a great job, so I'm just pleased to be a small part of it. Uh, wonderful. So uh, today we are taking questions from uh, one of Don's books called what everyone needs to know about the Bible. And again, you can find these things on Don's website, Educating Our World. Uh, he has uh, titles on just about anything that you can think of that pertains to these subjects. 10 Reasons to Trust the Bible, 10 Wonders of the Bible, Ancient Mysteries of the Bible Solved, uh, Are the Right Books in the Old Testament, Is the Bible the Ultimate Source of Authority, uh, Just uh, Bible Translations, Answering Difficult Bible Difficulties, Just a host of questions and answers that educating our world and uh, go and check it out. And also I want to thank you for joining us at Hope for Our Times and thank you for any of your support, uh, your prayers, and also uh, for anybody who uh, partners with us and uh, uh, just helping us move forward with any financial donation. We greatly appreciate it. It helps us to be able to bring hope to the world. So Don, a lot to ask you about. What everyone sure. needs to know about the Bible a first question that I have is, what value does the Old Testament have? You know, I am so happy that you asked that question, because if you recall, there was a, a few years ago, there was a very well-known pastor who, at a pastor's conference, told fellow pastors not to study or to read the Old Testament or teach from it, just do the New Testament. And, you know, Tom, the Old Testament is a foundation. Let's remember something, first and foremost. The Old Testament was the Bible of Jesus, the apostles, and the first century Jews. That's all they had, the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament. That is the foundation. Without the Old Testament, the New Testament makes no sense whatsoever. So basically, the Old Testament was important to Jesus. Remember, he said, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words won't pass away. Then he also said, don't think I came to abolish the law and the prophets. I came not to abolish them, but to fulfill them. In other words, he was fulfilling what was said in the Old Testament and the words he said about the Hebrew Scriptures, the Old Testament, will not pass away. So it was important to Jesus, the Old Testament. And, of course, we read the, the letters of the New Testament. It was important to Paul. And Paul, 1 Corinthians 10, 11, he says, these things, talking about Old Testament passages, happened to them as a warning to us. All this was written in Scripture to teach us how who live and how to live in these days. And so... Bottom line is, Tom, many central truths are found in the Old Testament. The prediction of the coming of the Messiah, the history of God's chosen people, Israel, some of the details of the future role of Christ. And so there's an enormous amount of material that is so sad, Tom, that so many people neglect reading or studying the Hebrew Scriptures, the, the, the Bible in its you know first form. And uh, I'm glad you asked me about that because it has tremendous value. It was valuable to Jesus, and it should be valuable to us. Uh, excellent answer. I think uh, many people who, I mean, there's so many pastors um, that not just the particular one who said, uh, we got to unhitch from the Old Testament. But there are so many pastors that claim to be believers in the Bible that say, don't read the Old Testament. It's irrelevant. And you look, you go, man, you forget exactly what you just said. It was so cool. This is the Bible of Jesus. It's the Bible of the apostles. It's, it's the Bible the New Testament writers would have used, the Apostle Paul. You know, and, and uh, you, it, so this takes us to the next question. What uh, value then does the New Testament have? Okay, the Old Testament is incomplete. There are things that were predicted that haven't, hadn't been fulfilled. The New Testament, first of all, records the fulfillment of a number of predictions about the coming Messiah, of the promises that God gave to the people from the very beginning. It explains how God became a human being in the person of Jesus Christ, God the Son, 
The New Testament, Tom, gives us the plan for lost sinners, how God saves us lost sinners, tells us what's going to happen in this present age, as well as informing us what's going to happen in the future and tells us how to live the Christian life. So we need both. We need the foundation to explain who God is, what he's all about, how we work with the special people, Israel. But then the promises that were made are only fulfilled, the ones that about the Messiah coming in the New Testament. And we have the specific promises recorded for us. So we really need both. We need to study the entire word of God, the, the whole word of God. And the New Testament again has like the Old Testament, tremendous value. Uh, absolutely. Uh, next question, how is there a connection to the Old Testament and the whole sacrificial doctrine? Now, this is a really, really important question because what God established at the beginning, remember one of the first things we read in the fourth chapter of the book of Genesis after the uh, birth of both Cain and then his brother Abel, is that God established a time, a certain a certain celebration there where people would bring sacrifices or offerings to him. Cain brought you know his things from the field. He was a farmer and uh, the fruit of the field. And, and Abel, of course, had a sacrifice, had a, you know, a blood sacrifice as it were. And so from the very beginning, sacrifice has been important. What we see over and over again, Tom, in scripture is when uh, there was very key moments in, in the Bible, you find people like Abraham, performing sacrifice. You find others, Job actually doing sacrifices for his family. You've got the people who are important in scripture. Uh, you know, even before the time of the giving of the law, sacrifice was established, but then you got the book of Leviticus, which basically in great detail tells us about the whole sacrificial system, the meaning of the tabernacle and later the temple. And so the whole thing is looking forward to the time of the coming of the Messiah, the one who will sacrifice himself for the sins of the world. The Bible Bible says in 2 Corinthians chapter 5, the one who knew no sin became a sin offering for us that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. So everything was looking forward to the sacrifice that Christ would give. And so without the Old Testament, without the explanation of the sacrificial system, none of the things that the New Testament talks about make any sense. Again, this is why we need both Testaments. Yeah, you know, that's a great point. You know, you think of uh, these pastors are saying unhitch from the Old Testament and you don't need it, but how could you make sense of everything you just said? How do you make sense of the Passover lamb, uh, of Jesus uh, being crucified, or arrested at Gethsemane, uh, tortured, put upon a cross? You couldn't make sense of, of really any of it, or the prophecies even of his birth or anything. It would, Jesus would be, without the Old Testament, would be a person. I mean, you wouldn't even have the prophecies of the Old Testament. You, no. you, you have to have it all. No, and like you said, like we said from the very beginning with Cain and Abel, we could go to Genesis chapter 2, Abraham taking Isaac on Mount Moriah to offer him as a sacrifice, and God stopped him and said, the Lord is, is going to provide for himself a sacrifice. You mentioned the Passover in Exodus 12 to 14, of the Passover lamb. You've got Isaiah 53, the prediction of the, the death of the Messiah. All that is absolutely necessary. Because remember, uh, Tom, when Jesus, on the day of his resurrection in, Matthew, in Luke 24, with the two disciples on the Emmaus Road, they were actually leaving. This is amazing. The same day that women came to them, two groups of women, that they, the, the tomb was empty. Jesus had come back from the dead. There were angels that told them that. They leave Jerusalem okay, to go, go to the uh, city of Emmaus. And when Jesus rebuked them uh, for telling them, you know, why they were leaving, what, what they knew about Jesus, which was incomplete, he said, wasn't it necessary for the Christ to first suffer and then enter into his glory? Then he explained to what? He explained to them all the scriptures about himself. Again, it was documented already. That's why God has spoken to us in the beginning, documented in, in written form. So we have no excuse, no excuse whatsoever. Uh, amen. Uh, next question, why is the Bible divided into chapter and verse? Okay, that's a great question, but it's not in the original. In fact, uh, one of the first things you should do in good biblical interpretation is ignore the chapter and verse divisions. Uh, Matthew 16, 28, when it talks about, Jesus said, some of you won't die until you see, you know, basically the glory of the Son of Man to something to that extent. And then, then it ends the chapter, then, but chapter, then chapter 17, verse 1, is, it picks up on that. Eight days later, you've got the transfiguration of Jesus is what it was referring to. The same thing, too, about one of 
the um, th subjects I've just finished about Genesis chapter, you know, chapter six, verses one to four. People make the mistake of figuring that uh, Genesis six, one to four is a prologue to the flood. I don't think so at all. I think Genesis chapter six is actually an appendix to chapter five and the prologue to the flood doesn't start till Genesis six, five. But what happened was chapter and verses were later put in for convenience sake. So people could find, you know, where certain passages were, but they're not part of the original, not at all. So as one great scholar, A.T. Robertson said, the first thing you want to do is ignore the chapter and verse divisions. Just go read it all the way through. It was meant to be read through. And some of the verse divisions and the chapter divisions aren't the best, as it were, because it's human made. It's not part of, they weren't part of scripture in the beginning. Just given for simplicity, be able to find something, a reference. I've, I've had that so many times where somebody will come up to me and say, well, you misinterpreted this because this is a whole different chapter than the one before it. Therefore, I said, no, you can't read it that way. And you try to explain it and, and people just, I don't know, they, they just sometimes just don't quite get it. <laughs> I know. I know. We understand. And what does the phrase, this is a big one, uh, the very difficult for people to understand. What does the phrase, the word of God mean? All right. The Word of God is used in a number of different ways in Scripture. First of all, it was the spoken Word of God. In other words, when God spoke, it was His Word to people when it came from Him. But also, Tom, there's something else we need to understand that's important. When the New Testament, or the Old Testament prophets, New Testament prophets spoke for God, they spoke the Word of God. So basically, it was the Word of God, and, and you know, through the prophets, through the spokesman for God, the Word of humans. Now, ultimately, when we talk about the Word of God, it is the written word of God, which is also extremely important because what the Bible is, it's a compilation of, you know, God working throughout history of his spokesman saying certain things, uh, listing certain events that took place for our benefit, for the plan of God to be seen for us for time, for eternity. So it is the word of God. And, and here's the key. What it means is by this is this is the one place the one book where it's god's blueprint god's instruction manual this is this is where we go for answers so we go to it and it alone for final answers first corinthians 4 6 says don't go beyond that which is written we need to study the scriptures the word of the living god the trustworthy word of the living god tom and we need to have reverence for it and respect for it not try to add to it and not try to subtract from it in uh keeping in context with that uh, does the Old Testament claim to be the Word of God? I know you are kind of already answered that, but I'm going to I'm going to throw one other thing in here also. So sure. if you if, um, so, you have in John chapter one, Jesus, uh, the Bible claims, in the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. So you start putting all of these things together, and people get kind of confused. And I know you kind of already answered uh, much of this, but maybe a little bit more. Um, sure. There's there's just so much there. Right. Okay. So, so specifically, what was the question? Then? <laughs> <laughs> I had a few of them all tied in. Uh, let's, uh, you, you pretty much already answered this. Does the Old Testament claim to be the Word of God? Um, yeah. Okay. Yeah. About 5,000 times it says, thus says the Lord. <laughs> <laughs> that that kind of says it, doesn't it? The Lord yes, it does. So, so yeah, it does. By mere, that mere fact, you've got that over and over again. The Lord said this, the Lord said that. So those are the claims of the Old Testament that God has spoken, you know, through the prophets and sometimes recording his audible words that uh, that he said to certain people. A Amen. And people just, they, they overlook so much because they don't see the word of God. They, they don't, it's like they mix up. Okay, when you get to the New Testament, John chapter one, in the beginning was the word, the word was with God and the word was God. You know, we talked about this before in one of the others, uh, the, the other video sessions that we did regarding Jehovah's Witnesses, but there's just, it's a confusion that's there um, that people, they just, it's, it's like, well, how does that, how does that work? And then you have where Jesus himself says, although heaven and earth will pass away, my word will never pass away. So right. it is, can you? Talk on yeah, that. Sure. Okay. Yeah, Jesus, yeah, Jesus is the Word of God. In the beginning was the Word, the Word was with God, and the Word was God. Though He's the Logos there. He is the one that interprets God, that explains God. I think you need to go down to verse 18 of John 1 to really get the full answer. It says, no one's ever seen God. 
but the one and only Son, who is near to the heart of the Father. He has explained him. So Jesus himself is the Word of God. His words are God's words, but he himself is the living Word of God that came to earth to explain to us what God is like, and that's the key to his coming. That's the whole point of the first chapter of the Gospel of John. He was in the beginning. He was face to face with God, but he was God himself, second person of the Trinity, and he came to explain as the word of God what God's word is for us for time and eternity. So the word is used in, you know, in different ways, of course, in this context for the person of Jesus Christ, then of course the spoken word, and then finally, of course, the written word. Amen. Uh, thank you very much, Don. And I know we are all out of time. I have a lot more to ask you about the Word of God next time. And by the way, again, you can find Don at Educating Our World. So he has uh, go over there, check out the many different things that he has, the Bible, who is God, Jesus Christ, the unseen world, the Bible and science, the Holy Spirit, humanity, sin and salvation, Bible prophecy, the afterlife. You want to know about that? Of course, we'll be getting into all of these, but you can check him out again right there at educatingourworld.com. And also want to thank all of you for joining us here at Hope for Our Times. And uh, if you would, please like and share this video. And if you don't subscribe to Hope for Our Times yet, please subscribe. Really appreciate that. And also hit the notifications. It helps you be notified whenever we have a new video uh, that is posted. God bless you guys. And I look forward to seeing you soon. <laughs>